Enzyme JL is a Julia package that provides a powerful automatic differentiation tool by leveraging the Enzyme library, a cutting edge LLVM based AD engine. Designed for high performance computing and flexibility, Enzyme JL integrates seamlessly with Julia's LLVM based compiler, allowing users to compute derivatives of arbitrary Julia code, including conditionals and external libraries without requiring explicit code annotations. This enables the efficient computation of gradients. Jacobians and higher order derivatives, making it ideal for scientific computing optimization and machine learning applications. Enzyme.jl stands out for its ability to handle complex low level operations and deliver highly optimized derivative computations. In this tutorial, we are going to specifically focus on using Enzyme in the Julia programming language. First of all, open the Julia REPL, hit the right square bracket, and add Enzyme. This will add the Enzyme package to your Julia environment. You have to wait for it to be installed. First of all, I'll explain the basic principles for using the Enzyme package. After the package has been installed successfully, we'll use the using keyword and import Enzyme. Now I have created the file Enzyme underline example.jl. For brevity and to save time, I paste my codes and explain each line one by one. So I have imported Enzyme. Now I define a function. This is the function that I'm going to differentiate with respect to the independent variables. Each argument of the function is a separate variable. Then again, I define the same function, but this time I pass the arguments as a vector. That is a vector x, which the first component is the x variable and the second component of the vector is the y variable. The enzyme.jl API revolves around the function autodiff. For some common operations, Enzyme additionally wraps autodiff in several convenience functions like gradient and Jacobian. For the autodiff function, you can use two different modes of differentiation. Forward mode automatic differentiation and reverse mode automatic differentiation. Forward mode AD computes derivatives by propagating tangents, derivatives of inputs with respect to a given independent variable through the computational graph. Works well when the number of input variables or independent variables is small compared to the number of of output variables. And there is the reverse mode differentiation which computes derivatives propagating adjoints, partial derivatives of outputs with respect to intermediate variables backward through the computational graph. It efficiently computes the gradient of a scalar output with respect to many inputs by using the chain rule in reverse, which is highly efficient when the number of output variables or dependent variables is a small, typically for example a loss function in machine learning, and the number of input variables is large. So the first argument of the additive function is the automatic differentiation mode, which is reverse mode on line 12. You can mark a function argument x of additive as active and enzyme will auto differentiate with respect to active arguments. The return value of reverse mode additive is a tuple that contains as a first value the derivative of the active inputs and optionally the primal return value. Also, both the in place and normal variant return the gradient. The difference is that with active, the gradient is returned and with duplicated, the gradient is accumulated in place. That is, if you run the line 20 several times, by the way, I've made a mistake and run the duplicate it alone so I have to run the line 20 again and if you run the line 20 several times the derivatives would be accumulated in the dx variable. The return value when using forward mode is a single element tuple containing the derivative. In forward mode, duplicated x, zero is equivalent to const x, except that we can perform more optimizations for const. Const x marks the function argument x of additive as a constant. Enzyme will not auto differentiate with respect to const arguments. The first argument passed to the duplicated is the point value. For example, y is passed as 2, but the second argument of duplicated is the seed argument. On line 26, when we seed both arguments at once, the tangent return is the sum of both. There exists key convenience functions for common derivative computations such as gradient and its in place variant gradient exclamation mark. Like additive, the mode forward or reverse is determined by the first argument. The functions gradient and gradient exclamation mark compute the gradient of functions with vector input and scalar return. Gradient functions take a mode as the first argument. If the mode is reverse or forward, the return type is a tuple of gradients of each argument. The function Jacobian computes the Jacobian of a function vector input and vector return. Like additive and gradient, the mode forward or reverse is determined by the first argument. Again, like 
like gradient. If the mode is reverse or forward, the return type is a tuple of Jacobians of each argument. Here I'm defining my func1 and my func2, and my func3 is the vector of these functions, and I'm calculating the Jacobian and passing 1 and 2 as the x1 and x2 to the functions. Here I'm referring to the my func tree. Jacobian function also has optional arguments that you can check further in the documentation. As you can see, the result is the matrix returned 4, 1, 5, and minus 0.416. Also, there exists Hessian vector product convenience functions. Enzyme also provides convenience functions for second order derivative computations like HVP to compute Hessian vector product which is mathematically this computes hx times v which is a vector where h is the hessian operator but here unlike additive and gradient a mode is not specified here enzyme will choose to perform forward over reverse mode generally the fastest for this type of operation enzyme also provides an in-place variant which will store the hessian vector product in a pre-allocated array also enzyme provides a second in-place variant which simultaneously computes both the hessian vector Vector product and the gradient. This function uses no additional allocation and is much more efficient than separately computing the HVP and the gradient. We can easily check the values stored in the res and grad variables. As an example, to show you some applications, I import enzyme and chiromachy, define a function, differentiate that function, and store its values into two vectors and plot the vector field for the derivative of the function. Note that on line 11, when I'm calling additive and passing the reverse mode, I'm typing enzyme.reverse because both chiromachy and enzyme packages use the reverse function, so I have to be specific. Do not forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to not lose future content on Julia programming language. As always, see you all later.